Only three days into the legendary month, the team has experienced great action overall, despite the less than ideal hunting conditions. Picking up right where he left off, team member Mitch Malaris is hot on the trail of his target buck Tigger. After the previous evening's encounter, Mitch is perched in the same stand for the afternoon hunt on November 4th. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us. It's not a pretty good evening, but just didn't have the right buck do what, exactly what we needed him to do. But, uh, that's a deer we call Irish. Super red forehead. It just ain't quite the deer we're looking for. We're looking for Tigger. Awesome deer, great encounter. It actually turned out to be a pretty good evening with seeing him and Johnny Lee and out there bumping some does around. So we're gonna stay after it. We got a few more days left of vacation and Gotta keep hoping and praying we get an opportunity at Tigger. Oh yeah, that's him. That's him. The slow moving buck steps out after shooting light, bringing Mitch's hunt to a close. The following morning, 300 miles to the north, team member Darren Holman is hunting his newly purchased Iowa farm. Well, here's our November 5 morning interview. Uh, it's a little too late for before the kill. Um, this, this G2 buck came in bright and early. I mean, it was literally five or seven minutes after legal shooting light and, and offered a 20 yard shot. So recognized his girls right away. And uh, it's a five year old buck. and. Put a good shot on him he he didn't make it i'm guessing 50 to 60 yards we heard him go down so that was exciting um first first buck on the farm here um, we're getting this farm dialed in for for years down the road and uh go ahead and see what g2 looks like well here he is he crashed down in that didn't make it maybe 60 yards so crashed down in that side there and He's a beautiful eight pointer. Hoping, hoping this farm improves from all the work we're gonna put into it. And uh, Logan will have a tag next year for the farm here for Bo. And uh, I'll be a film guy for him out here in Iowa. And then we'll do our uh, our routine uh, to Kansas for my tag next year for bow hunting. So thanks for watching us here on Midwest Whitetail, the Great Lakes Show. While Darren celebrates the great buck as the sun rises, 60 miles to the south, team member Brooks Cahoe is perched high in a bluff overlooking the river. It's the morning of November 5th. I have Ty behind the camera this morning. He's going to film me until about 1 o'clock, but uh, Ty had some luck yesterday morning. Um, we hunted our new farm. Dad, Ty, and I all split up. Um, and I was self-filming because I could very easily in the stand I was in. Uh, and we just wanted to see what was moving and Ty had class at 10, so he had to get down early. Um, first day in five days, we weren't filming together and he shoots a nice buck, so um, that was pretty awesome. But now I got him behind the camera. We're on a big, big um, bridge above the river here. Um, and they just run it on a west wind blowing this way. They just run it back and forth. Um, I'm gonna do an all day sit. Ty's gonna leave at one, but um, we already had a doe work through before shooting lights, so that was good to see. But uh, it's November 5th, they should be, should be kicking into gear anytime soon here.
With the rest of the day ahead of him, Brooks keeps a watchful eye on the horizon for a cruising buck. 60 miles to the southwest, Jared Mills is also on stand, taking another shot at the big 10-pointer he's encountered multiple times this season. It's the morning of November 5th, and Connor and I are set up in a completely new area going after this big 10. We're set up in between a couple of ponds. You can see the big one over my left shoulder. There's a smaller one. And this pond dam falls off right here. And so it's one of the only open spots in this section where we could actually see and get a shot. But it serves as a nice little funnel here too. It's not a very big piece. So if he's in here, he's not far away. I know the, the landowner he walks his dog uh, around the property and last year he would see this he saw this deer multiple days in a row during this time frame in this section with does and it seems like a, a pretty natural spot for a buck to shack up with a doe kind of away from everything else and the other thing too that led us to the spot as we we're in the middle of this 70 degree weather and last year yesterday we were checking some cameras and saw multiple bucks with those bedded by water. So that's something to keep in mind if you're out hunting these warm temps. You know, obviously the deer need the water more when it's warmer, but they were literally bedded right on the water source in most cases, not you know, not just a little ways from it, but they were right on it. So it's a cool looking spot. It's a nice morning and uh, hopefully deer move in a little bit before it warms up too much. Tucking into the small pin oak, Jared awaits the first deer of the morning. About a half hour after sunrise. Um, haven't seen anything since that doe came through before um, shooting like this morning. So, gonna hit the horns here. Um, see if we can uh, make a little luck. Smoked him. Yeah. Smoked him. Stay on 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 him. <gasps> yes. Nice. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? 
<laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's been an awful morning. I have we haven't seen anything. We had two does and a spike buck. And so last year I was in this spot and we had a big buck come through and I blew the shot. It was a 20 yard shot, perfect shot, blew it um, on, a, on a great buck. And you know, coming back in here this morning, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't blow it again if a deer comes by. And it's a buck we call Trace. He's a big five by, he has five, but he has three big brow tines. Um, and, uh, and he comes right in and, and I've been practicing all year, all year, all year, doing as much as I can um, to try to be ready for this. And I take my time and settle in and I smoke him um, and he goes maybe 30 yards and drops. So, uh, monkey's off my back. I haven't shot a good buck with my bow in years, 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 years. So. Now, I didn't have time to shake, now I'm shaking good. But it is, it's warm, it's about 8.30. Nice. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> There's the arrow. That's the kind of blood trail you want. Hey, old bud. Here he is, the buck we call Trace. At four and a half, he had the same messed up side that he does this year at five and a half. Uh, thankfully, he put on a lot more time length on the five point side and a lot more junk on the left side. This morning at 8.30, he came cruising through. Been a struggle this year so far with the heat, but uh, that didn't stop this big boy from cruising through. Uh, I'm excited for the rest of the year and look forward to putting some does on the ground and getting back out there late muzzleloader to try to get another mature buck down. The following morning, November 6th, Jared Mills switches gears and makes the move to the river farm. Hoping to catch Marino or Dak out cruising, he selects one of his favorite stands. Alright, it's the morning of November 6th, and Connor and I are set up on the, probably one of the coolest spots on the river farm right here on the bend of the river so we're blowing our wind back out across so it's a it's a great setup as far as that goes i don't hunt here very often just because it's it's super hard to get into without busting deer but to my knowledge we didn't bust anything this morning we got we left super early so we were set up well before daylight and just kind of waiting letting things settle down we could actually hear a couple bucks going at it uh, a couple different times back here in the peninsula and it sounded pretty heavy so hopefully whatever it was is still in here and we'll get a look at it it's gonna be like 75 degrees today but right now it actually feels pretty good just a beautiful morning nice and calm can't ask for much more for a, a November morning of the tree stand
crunching leaves beneath Jared's stand inspire promise, but so far, a shooter hasn't appeared. 900 yards to the southwest, Mike Reed is also on stand, electing to hunt his adjacent river property. a little bit before nine o'clock. It's Friday, November 6th, and we've been covered up in deer uh, all morning. I took the day off of work today. So I've got three days to hunt down here at the River Bottom Farm. This morning we're hunting on uh, the additional acres that I purchased this past spring. We just did a hanging hunt. We're in this little white oak. I, I don't know much how the deer move through here, but uh, you know, it's basically this canary grass wetland bottom area, and I've just seen multiple does bedded in here over time, and so I thought, we'll come get on the edge of it and see what happens. It's really open, so you can, uh, at least up here it looks open. On the ground level, it's, it's pretty thick. We've seen eight or nine different bucks, and uh, the best of which is the black-eyed 10. That's the first time I see him this year. It's pretty cool to see him. He grew a little bit from last year, He's got short brows, but a, but a big frame, and um, he came right in here to 10 yards. I've actually had him in daylight all over the farm for the last couple of weeks. And of course he comes in to 10 yards. He worked the scrape there, broke off that branch, got tangled up in his antlers. I mean, it's so fun to, to watch that stuff. He's a, he's a five and a half year old, and um, I've just got my heart set on Dak with my last tag here, so got to sit back and enjoy it and, and watch him come by. And, mess with the does and he actually worked off worked off around the river bend here in these last 10 minutes I've been the first break in the action and we'll see if it continues later on to the morning it's supposed to get really hot today 70 or so so but it is November 6th and we're in a great spot for the deer to come around the river and cruise to this bottom and uh, my 
my primary target right here is going to be Dak. I've had him on these cameras. I've got basically four cameras around me that he's been on. I don't think there's any chance of having Marino come down this way. I say that, but it's the right, you never know. But I, I've never had him on camera. I don't think he's ever really ventured this far this direction, but there's a possibility of Dak, and, and um, he's my primary target, so we'll see if he shows up. It looks like a young deer, one of those young tens. Mike's hunt wraps up without another mature buck sighting. Back with Jared, he's still experiencing buck action. It's just after 11 and we're about to get down pretty soon. It's warming up pretty good and we got some other stuff to do, but we just watched buck number 15 cruise by at a couple hundred yards. So it's been a really fun morning despite not seeing any shooters. Uh, I'm not sure what the plan is for the afternoon. I'm not sure that we're going to hunt, but we'll be back out tomorrow morning for sure. Mike and Jared weren't the only team members hunting the morning of November 6th. Elliot Smith and Elliot Shelfeffer are hunting in the heart of the Wisconsin hardwoods. Awesome last couple days in the tree. He came through about 8:15. He was just cruising. He wasn't chasing a door or anything. But I mean, he gave me basically a chip shot. Very thankful. Very happy that we found him. It's probably my biggest buck to date. So can't thank Elliot and his dad enough. It's a great hunt. Great week. Thanks for tuning in. That evening, Mitch is back in the same northern Missouri stand, continuing the chase for Tigger. No, 
to say I'm disheartened is an understatement. He did everything we wanted him to, up to the point of jumping at 20 yards like every other deer has done this year. That takes, that, that's a big shot there, having him right here at 20 yards on the other side of the fence, and, and then he goes on down, that, that hurts. Despite the heat wave that continues to persist across the Midwest, the past few days of hunting prove again that to find success in November, things can be far from perfect. Not throwing strategy to the wind completely, our efforts to focus on mornings near water are paying off. Three bucks alone searching for the next hot doe, and three bow hunters heading back to camp with a new story to share proves just that. Mitch Malaris' string of close calls with Tigger continue, with the fifth encounter being his best chance yet. Unfortunately, he will have to put his quest on hold as he must return to work for the next few days. Mike Reed and Jared Mills are having great hunts, encountering plenty of bucks, but their targets continue to elude them. The weekend is finally here, and all that stands between us and what is arguably the single best day of the season is a restless night of sleep. Ignore the forecast, the time is now. Any of the best spots will work, you just need to be in the area where the mature buck lives, putting in your time. You just need to be out there. Chasing November.